Arguably the greatest question we as a species face today is one that seems so simple, yet proves again and again to be terrifically, mind-bogglingly complex. Where did we come from? Perhaps we will never be able to agree on a definitive answer, but marked progress has been made in the efforts to provide even a clue as to our genetic origins. It is now the almost universally accepted theory that man has descended from a series of progressively more developed primate ancestors. While we cannot make any surefire claim about the origin of these predecessors, we have been able to use many revolutionary techniques to map the progress of their evolution. My goal in conducting this experiment is to glean a better understanding of the complex mechanics behind both primate evolution and genetics as a whole by studying ALU elements, retroposons often referred to as selfish DNA, because of their unique ability to insert themselves, or jump, into other gene sequences and thus prioritize their reproduction far more than it would have been had they been confined to the Y chromosome where many researchers speculate these elements may have originated. ALUs are widely considered to be of noteworthy evolutionary import, because when an ALU inserts itself, it can provide an alternative splice site, or even cause mutations, such as that which led to trichromatic vision. However, ALUs don't need to mutate, destroy, throw surprise parties for, or really manipulate the DNA in any way other than simply being there to be an invaluable resource for the sciences. Because ALU insertions have a tendency to stay there, we can learn much about the progression of the human species by analyzing the frequency of these insertions among different populations. I hypothesized that by isolating the PV92 loci of the 16th chromosomes of 23 test subjects, I could identify the presence of ALU insertion alleles using DNA electrophoresis and compare their genotypes to the world and to the Hardy-Weinberg principle using the BLAST program at bioservers.org to analyze the effects of the evolutionary pathway. After extracting DNA from hair roots of the subjects, I proceeded to amplify the PV92 locus via polymerase chain reaction run a current through the amplified DNA with electrophoresis, stain the samples with ethidium bromide, and observe the results with a UV light. As seen in the photograph, only 16 of the 24 subjects being tested for the insertion yielded results. While it may not seem like much, any absence of data in an already limited sample size could very well compromise the accuracy of an experiment. From those wells with visible bands, I was able to discern that 44% of samples tested homozygous dominant with a positive allele, whereas the heterozygous genotype accounted for 25% of the total, and homozygous recessive for 31%. The results were nothing short of surprising. Analysis of world populations showed that the homozygous recessive genotype should actually be far more prominent than the dominant trait. Euro-Americans, for example, resulted in 67% of subjects having the homozygous recessive genotype, while only 2% had the dominant counterpart. While deviation from the Hardy-Weinberg principle, on which I based my predictions, was definitely less extreme, there were still noticeable discrepancies, namely that the heterozygous genotype accounted for 25% of results, as opposed to the expected 49%. Whether the results of the experiment should be written off as a failure or a success is subjective, but I would say that the seemingly outré results are due to little more than chance and a relatively small sample size. Human error, of course, cannot be forgotten. Because subjects were instructed how to extract their own DNA, the chance of error was exponential. Tedious work can also lead to a lapse of logic, and therefore injured results. Any number of these small errors could easily have caused the lack of DNA I encountered in my experiment. Although I may not have found quite the results I was expecting, 
the research of such an important aspect of the world we live in has left me feeling fulfilled with the knowledge that not only have i learned more than i could have hoped but that i stand to learn so much more